We have three approved non-VKA oral anticoagulants and one which we think is about to be approved. Two of these drugs are given once a day and two of these drugs are given twice a day. The half-lives of all of these drugs is around 12 hours. And this is on the borderline for a therapy that's once a day or twice a day. And so obviously decisions had to be made during the development of these drugs to make them either once daily or twice daily. But now, of course, there's a lot of intrigue about whether a once daily approach or a twice daily approach is the better one. We have, for example, information coming from patient surveys. And I've shown some information on a slide that uh, I'm looking at now. The data is from Zamorano and his colleagues, and they asked patients specifically whether they, they would prefer once a day treatment or twice a day treatment. And the results were really uh, quite dramatic in the sense that about 80% of patients clearly said that they wanted once daily medication. But of course, uh, that's not the end of the story because uh, the pharmaco kinetics of these drugs is interesting. At 12 hours of half-life, it means that after 24 hours, a once daily drug has a trough level which is much lower than a drug that is given twice a day. And if you miss a once daily drug, you're going to go to a very low trough level until you can take that medication and increase the plasma concentration of the drug. But if you miss a drug that's given twice a day and you miss only one of these medications, you know that the uh, trough level is not going to be so low and you'll remain presumably better anticoagulated. So there's much argument about whether missing a single dose, for example, would be more hazardous if the drug is given once a day or is given twice a day. Uh, we, I don't think, have a lot of good answers to this. We can certainly plot the pharmacokinetics and we can agree that we probably get lower plasma concentrations with the once a day drug that's missed once. But uh, there are some experiments that were done during the development of these agents to try and see whether once a day or twice a day, giving the same total dose in both circumstances, would be better or worse. And the one study that impresses me very much is a study that was done with edoxaban. In this study, they gave edoxaban at uh, 30 milligrams a day, uh, 60 milligrams a day, 30 milligrams twice a day, and 60 milligrams twice a day. And the interesting part to compare is the 60 milligrams once a day and the 30 milligrams twice a day. And on this particular slide, you can see the bleeding events plotted on the vertical axis. And you can see for the same total daily dose, there were more bleeding events if the drug was given twice daily rather than once daily. Now, I believe that with other agents there are similar studies, but the results have not always been the same. And so different companies have gone in different directions. But at least this is intriguing, and we are asked to think about whether we would prefer as physicians to use once a day or twice a day medication. <coughs> we have, of course, uh, a lot of surveys of uh, the way in which patients use drugs. And it seems pretty clear from those surveys that uh, patients do persist with therapy and comply or adhere to therapy better if it's once a day than if it is twice a day. But we've already rehearsed that uh, you have to think about missing not one dose but two doses if you uh, want to strictly compare once daily or twice daily. Many have argued that uh, 
If a patient is already taking medications on a twice daily basis, and of course many cardiac medications are twice a day, then giving another drug, let's say a novel oral anticoagulant twice a day, should be no particular hazard, wouldn't be any particular problem. They're taking drugs twice a day. But others argue that once a day is far more convenient, and they particularly point out that they can usually guarantee to be in the same place at least once a day, like when they get up in the morning or when they go to bed at night and they could take a once a day drug quite conveniently. But at other times of the day, 12 hours apart from either of those times, uh, they may be anywhere and they may forget their drug, they may not have it to take. So <clears throat> I think this is remaining a very controversial uh, issue. Personally, I think I would take a once daily drug more reliably than a twice daily drug, but others may have a different view. Uh, I would like to make a remark on this point, uh, which is not a theoretical one, but a really practical one. Um, I was surprised at the beginning of our experience. You remember that the first drug we had was Dabigatron. Uh, it's a twice a day drug. And uh, I proposed to some patients to switch from vitamin K antagonist uh, to uh, uh, Dabigatron. <coughs> I explained them what was this new drug. And when I said to them that you will have to take a twice a day, uh, I had some patients saying it's not really an advance because I had a once a day, which is uh, the vitamin K antagonist, and you propose me uh, uh, twice a day. Uh, what I want to say is that I think it's more easy to change, to switch from a vitamin K antagonist to a once a day drug, and that's a problem for the initiation. It's the first time we give the drug to the patient is really different. Uh, that's a small point, but it's a practical one. And I think that for initiation, I don't hesitate to give it twice a day. But if I have to make a switch, it's really difficult to say to the patient that he will have to take twice instead of once a day. Freak, what do you think uh, patients think about it? Uh, I showed you the results of a survey <coughs> saying that, that patients liked uh, once a day. But uh, is that your experience too? Uh, I I agree with John. If I never thought about it, um, but if it's the other way around, if patients have to go back to VKA, uh, sometimes you have to when patients uh, need a stent or um, uh, getting uh, acute coronary syndromes. When they go from a twice daily NOAC to uh, VKA, which is only once daily, you may have the same problem. Um, on the other hand, I think. Um, that's what you already pointed out, that many patients have many other drugs that are taken twice daily, so does it make a lot of difference? Um, uh, usually there are on five or six drugs, these AFib patients, antihypertensives, um, um, uh, uh, lipid lowering drugs, um, so they have a lot of other medications. Um, so I think the difference is marginal. That's my personal view. Raf, do you think that this difference that I uh, mentioned with uh, once a day total dose and twice a day the same total dose uh, in terms of reducing bleeding events. Do you think that's a real finding? Do you know how to explain it? I think um, this is uh, an area that needs further exploration because uh, we have to understand that uh, the decision of going once daily or twice daily in phase three uh, clinical trials was based on relatively limited comparative experience in phase two uh, development. And there were uh, really very few comparison of the same daily doses in the two uh, regimens, once daily versus twice daily. The uh, experience with uh, edoxaban, which you mentioned, is uh, an important one because uh, it was uh, it was a well uh, powered, reasonably well powered as a phase two study um, design, and showed that you have this paradox that was uh, um, unanticipated of less bleeding with uh, deeper trough and higher peaks. Uh, this is not unique in uh, the landscape of development of uh, NOACs because uh, also uh, another um, factor 10A inhibitor 
Darexavan that was studied in the setting of acute coronary syndromes in the setting of the Ruby uh, 2 study, uh, showed uh, in different subgroups that uh, you have uh, a trend, not significances in this case, but trends towards less bleeding with once daily versus twice daily with the same daily dosing. However, it's not a fully consistent uh, data because uh, there is also limited data from the Rivaroxaban experience, the ODIX study, uh, which did not show this uh, advantage in terms of um, uh, once daily dosing. The theory behind would be that if you leave uh, the vascular wall have some breath from the continuous exposure to, to anticoagulation, it can seal some way micro leaks that may occur and this may lead to less bleeding. But this is an interesting concept but needs further studies in order to be accepted. Otherwise, you can stretch data uh, in all possible directions. On the one hand, you have uh, the Aristotle data that show that you have uh, less bleeding, you have uh, less stroke and uh, also less death with it with the twice daily dosing. On the other, you have the Edoxaban data that says that the choice that was made either with the 60 or the 30 milligram once daily was certainly safer. But how to interpret this? We, are, we have studies that uh, only run one regimen selected with a sort of serendipity from phase two studies. Well, what Rafael just said at, at the end is an important comment. When we try to uh, find the signal that you have shown in the phase three trials, uh, I don't see it. I don't, I mean, I see a very consistent signal that we have less intracranial hemorrhages with the NOACs compared to vitamin K antagonists, irrespective of dosing. And, and even irrespective of the total dose in those that compared to different doses, uh, let alone co any difference between once or twice daily. I, and there are some differences in the totality of major bleeds, but even those don't correlate with once or twice daily dosing. And I think there is there is a more fundamental concept behind that. We're talking about one very small aspect of a pharmacokinetic package. Uh, one of the NOACs, the Bigatron, is uh, delivered in a, in a capsule. And in my simple clinical practice, the big capsules, yeah, the big capsules are one of the concerns and they probably contribute more to adherence and you cannot put them into weekly blisters. So the, there, are, there are other practicalities, but then there is absorption, there is reabsorption, there is metabolism, there is excretion via the kidneys or not. So I think the totality of the drug exposure is influenced by so many other factors that we, and I think we need to talk about a pharmacokinetic profile. And to be honest, my take from the phase three trials is, well, whatever these uh, different drug development programs did, they came up with a pharmacokinetic profile for their compound that led to a very similar rate in effectiveness and safety compared to the others. Well, I think that that's a very reasonable way to think about it. But, uh, Marco, let, let me ask you about uh, electrophysiology and the, these NOACs. Many electrophysiologists like to try and keep the anticoagulant going all the way through an ablation procedure, for example, or a pacemaker implantation or what have you, in the same way that we are now quite used to using continuation of warfarin all the way through uh, such procedures. And uh, once a day, particularly if the agent is taken in the evening, allows the whole of the next day up to the next dosing period for you to do the EP study on and towards the lower end of the anticoagulation range. Do you think that that's uh, an advantage for these drugs? Well, you're referring now to particular uh, EP uh, uh, surgery or uh, uh, ablations. Um, may I step back a little to, to, to daily practice, and then I'll come back to the to the procedures we are doing. So, um, I, I agree with Paulus that that maybe we should look to other uh, ways to ensure adherence to medication more than once or twice daily. Uh, the the cohort you've shown uh, comparing once to twice daily did show some increase in adherence, but but to me the dreadful thing to notice was that even in 
once daily medication, uh, once daily dosing, it was very low. It was around 66% only. Uh, this being an increase of 16%, if I sh- uh, if, if I saw well, uh, with the, the twice daily. So so apparently, uh, adherence is very low in daily life, as we all uh, all suspected. And and uh, you showed the pharmacokinetics of what happens if you uh, miss one daily dose, and that that equals twice dosed uh, drugs being missed. So, And if we look at, at the patient cohort we are treating, those are uh, in general older patients. And, and, and unfortunately, if I know from, from daily life what happens with these patients. And, and even in Baxter Rolls pre-packed, they are forgetting their medication. So I think even more important than once or twice daily, we should try to find ways to ensure adherence, whether that be electronically or backstoring or supplying the medication. That's a real challenge, I think. Then coming back to the uh, EP procedures, um, in my hospital, we are doing uh, PV ablations. We do stop and uh, uh, NOACs uh, before the procedure. Uh, I'm not sure. I think you continue uh, your NOACs. I remember from a previous discussion. We do stop. Uh, and and if you take your uh, once daily dosing uh, and you stop it, you will be off medication for a much longer period than its own than, than the twice daily dosing. So I'm I have no standpoint yet, but I'm not particularly in favor of the once daily dosing. I think people do forget it. It's maybe worse for getting your once daily dose than the twice daily dosing. So it's a difficult issue. Very important to uh, increase adherence. So as we can see, <clears throat> there's real, really no consensus about once a day or twice a day. And perhaps it should be down to the patient to decide uh, which of these uh, techniques uh, would be better for them. Clearly, it's not the only thing that uh, affects adherence or persistence with therapy, and we have to think this through very carefully, particularly because these drugs have such short half-lives. Uh, this is really an Achilles heel for these drugs in many ways because of the short half-life issue. But anyway, uh, some of the drugs are once a day and some are twice a day, and we will have to continue to explore whether the once daily dosing or the twice daily dosing appears to be better.